January 30th, 2020. Thursday of the third week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the second book of Samuel. After Nathan had spoken to King David, the king went in and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, Lord God, and who are the members of my house, that you have brought me to this point? Yet even this you see as too little, Lord God. You have also spoken of the house of your servant for a long time to come. This too you have shown to man, Lord God. You have established for yourself your people Israel as yours forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. And now, Lord God, confirm for all time the prophecy you have made concerning your servant and his house, and do as you have promised. Your name will be forever great when men say, The Lord of hosts is God of Israel, and the house of your servant David stands firm before you. It is you, Lord of hosts, God of Israel, who said in a revelation to your servant, I will build a house for you. Therefore your servant now finds the courage to make this prayer to you. And now, Lord God, you are God and your words are truth. You have made this generous promise to your servant. Do then bless the house of your servant, that it may be before you forever. For you, Lord God, have promised, and by your blessing the house of your servant shall be blessed forever. The Word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the response is, The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. Lord, remember David and all his anxious care, how he swore an oath to the Lord, vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. I will not enter the house where I live, nor lie on the couch where I sleep. I will give my eyes no sleep, my eyelids no rest, till I find a home for the Lord, a dwelling for the Mighty One of Jacob. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. The Lord swore an oath to David, a firm promise from which he will not withdraw, Your own offspring I will set upon your throne. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. If your sons keep my covenant and the decrees which I shall teach them, their sons too forever shall sit upon your throne. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He prefers her for his dwelling. Zion is my resting place forever. In her I will dwell, for I prefer her. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to his disciples, Is a lamp brought in to be placed under a bushel basket or under a bed and not to be placed on a lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be made visible. Nothing is secret except to come to light. Anyone who has ears to hear ought to hear. He also told them, Take care what you hear. The measure with which you measure will be measured out to you, and still more will be given to you. To the one who has, more will be given. From the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord This is Catholic Daily Reflections for Thursday of the third week in Ordinary Time. Today's reflection is entitled, One Good Reason for Mercy. He also told them, Take care what you hear. The measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. 
and still more will be given to you. How would you like others to deal with you? How would you like them to treat you? Most certainly, we would all like to be treated with mercy. We wish to be shown kindness, compassion, care, honesty, and the like. One thing this passage above reveals is that we will be dealt with by God in the same way we deal with others. Ideally, we will show mercy and goodness to others simply because it's the right thing to do. God calls us to a life of abundant charity, and we should desire to live that life. But if we struggle with charity toward others, perhaps one motivating factor could be to realize that we will be treated in the same way that we act toward others. Though this may put a certain holy fear in our hearts and encourage us to act with mercy, it should also call us to desire to go beyond the basics and to offer love and compassion in an abundant way. Think about it. If you spend your whole life striving to forgive, to show love, to reconcile, to help those in need, etc., you too can be assured of these gifts being lavished upon you now and in the end. You can be assured that God will not withhold anything from you. Instead, He will joyfully pour out upon you more than you could ever expect or hope for. Reflect today upon your own calling to a life of abundant generosity. There are countless ways that you are called to be generous toward others. Commit yourself to this life of goodness and then anticipate all that God will pour forth upon you. Let us pray. Lord, help me to be radically generous in my love and compassion toward others. Help me to forgive, to show kindness, to be merciful, and to do it all in abundance. I love you, my dear Lord. Help me to also love those you have put into my life with a perfect and total love. Jesus, I trust in you. Surrender.